Hello everyone, I'm KB and I'm going to be showing you how to set up a basic photo booth Facebook ad campaign. We're going to walk through each step of the campaign and select the objective, our audience targeting, location targeting, budgets. We're going to also focus on some content, copy, things that will make the photo booth campaign very successful and get to the right audience at the right time at the right place. So we went in and created a campaign and we named it traffic uh, photo booth main and there's no special ad categories for photo booths so we'll just skip past that the buying type that we stuck with by default is the auction the live bidding war against us competitors brands other business owners that are focusing on the same audience type segments or behavior and then there's reach and frequency so that's one-on-one -on -one viewers and the amount of times the ad shows within a allotted time. So we'll just stick with the auction by default. Again, we went with traffic because we do have a landing page that we do, we have created that we feel, you know, uh, does have some high quality content on it that we think once the viewer sees, they will automatically move to the next step, which is hopefully giving us their information and us reaching out to them, giving them a quote, following back up and getting them booked for any one of the photo booths. So traffic is the campaign objective. We're not going to A-B split test. We'll do that in another video. Uh, this right here, we're just going to leave off by default and then we'll go to next. So right here, we named it $5 a day. And it's going to be local, right? Because with photo booths, unless they say that they're servicing, you know, 500 miles away from their home base or, or their business base, you know, um, we would want to stay at least 30 miles within, you know, where they're located. And it's up to them, you know, they it's their business. They'll let you know if they have a company van or if they're putting that many miles on their car to do this, you know, side hustle or hobby or, or if it's, you know, their business, they have a company van. So we're driving them to the website because none of these things apply to what we're trying to do. Again, we're going to leave that daily budget at $5 and we have it set for about three weeks but you know we would if it depending on how the traffic engages with the landing page we can optimize either the landing page or possibly put more towards the budget to you know see if that drives more qualified leads so in between the three mark period we would focus on what's the best way to optimize but we would do things individually right we wouldn't change a whole bunch of like the copy and then change the image and then change the this that no we would just probably change the budget uh you know and, and see how that works if we did a little budget and if we see a lot of engagement we make and see no one clicking through where we can track it and see how that change attributes to engagement or any conversions so within our audience, we don't have any custom audiences that we're going to focus on. And again, unless the photo booth company tells you that they're servicing an entire region, I would say, you know, focus on at least 30 miles from their service business base or where they're located or what city they're located in. And then 30 miles outside of that, unless they want to expand it more. Um, and in regards to age, I would say, you know, starting out, go with the default age range that the Facebook ad manager gives us to, to go with. And then genders as well, stick with that. All this stuff you can kind of stick with uh, and cast the net wide so that, you know, we can scoop as many fish as possible and see which ones are the best ones to eat, right? Um, so we'll keep this as well, which is recommended. Sometimes you still have to read it, even if it's recommended to make sure that it's not uh, maximizing your budget in a negative way or, you know, things that don't really matter to your business. If you know your placements, which we'll do another video on, 
then you know you would select that and go through that process but for now we'll stay with the recommended see how the traffic on those placements are driving towards the landing page and then see what their engagement is see what the conversion rate is um you know booking rate things like that and then we would decide if we want to optimize what placements we want to focus on more <clears throat> so with optimization and delivery again you know this is super important because it's where you're going to drive your traffic to facebook gives you a little snippet choose the event you want to optimize and your ad set your selection affects who sees your ad to get you the most desired outcome right so basically you don't want to be having a sale that you really want bookings for and you know you're worrying about just getting impressions or people to see it now you know everything is testable right i do say you know test what you think is best or if you have at least a data driven or some type of research or insight on any one of these options then i'll say yes definitely go with that one by default and then you know test these other options but the most common sense thing here for this campaign that we're developing is drive it to the landing page right and we want the facebook ad manager and the algorithm to only focus on people that will actually click that button on that landing page or click the ad to get to the landing page right we only want to focus on those people we don't want to focus on people that just want to see it and scroll past us right we don't want people that would just do link clicks and 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 then they land on the page and what they are uh seeing is not what's relevant to what they have the propensity to engage in or buy right um daily unique reach again if you're not trying to get eyes and you're trying to get clicks in a, a specific way then you know i would avoid that one as well so we're going to stick with landing page views over here you can see some estimated daily results so this is one of the this is one of the most important parts um and usually what you'll see me do is i would start off with the ad campaign the ad part of it first just so i can get my eyes wrapped around what i'm actually trying to get out to the audience what the audience is going to see and then i kind of work my way up through creating the campaign like all the the smaller details that we discussed but for the first video, I just wanted to kind of go, you know, uh, in order step by step so no one get con gets confused. But, you know, as we work together more and you all watch a little bit more and you all like, subscribe and share more of this content or request more content about Photo Booth, uh, Facebook ads, then I'll go ahead and produce more of this. And of course, we'll start off from the bottom up. So just a little process that I like to do. And the most important thing here is to grab your media, right? You can add some images. I may have some in here from, you know, some past events. And the biggest thing that I always say is, you know, lighting is important. Uh, background is important. Um, you know, being able to get a facial expression, if you can, is important um, with the photo booth ads. Uh, if you can also get some type of text on there without getting restricted by the Facebook alg algorithm, I would say do so. I know it's possibly a limit to how much text can be on the image or video that you're placing on the platform. So I would just, you know, get familiar with some of those things. And again, we'll talk about some of those things in another video, some of the restrictions and things that Facebook does hold on, you know, content and, 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 and uh, yeah, just on content. <laughs> so this is pretty new. I always go with, you know just all optimizations making sure everything like the standard enhancements it's on you know right right um you know we want them to optimize our brightness if they can so things that i was just speaking about facebook they're they're you know 
offering it to creators and people that's managing is tailor the ad to, for persons and, and viewing it by letting us automatically optimize your creative, right? So they, they kind of know what we need um, in, in regards to music, which is good. <clears throat> this helps us not get shadow banned, you know, uh, in, on the platforms because Facebook know Meta knows, you know, what artists they're connected with the brands and all the streaming platforms and they want to get their streaming money too. So, you know, choosing your own music could possibly put you at a disadvantage or low performance because it may not be approved by the platforms and stuff like that. So, you know, just getting some example songs. Yeah, I like that one. I don't think we need the 3D, so some things you may not need, you know, that's why it's important for you to walk through it. Um, let's see, if you choose your own music, then yeah, you know, that's pretty cool. But again, you may not, they allow you, okay, they give you, I got you, so I was wrong. Facebook will, when you choose your own music, Instead of them randomly selecting it. This is really cool. They got some really cool options here. Some things about tempo. So that's super cool. You add it. Now it looks good on all, plat all platforms. Now it's time for the copy. See a lot of title case here, so, or just caps here. So kind of do some title case here, you know, stay consistent again. Let's, name of the game we'll add this copy in here uh so what we how we went about it is so moving along to the copy part of the ad creative the primary text we had some text that we had saved on our notes so you know, we try to focus on how we're benefiting the audience that we're targeting, right? Discover ultra modern photo booth fun, including unlimited captured memories. So of course, we just want to make sure that they know that we're somewhat in the photography, videography, obviously, and, you know, for their special days or special events like weddings, birthday parties, things like that. You know, we're trying to show uh, to them how we're you know, boots on the ground, getting some of the best moments, as you can see, uh, with the content that we're using, the creative that we're using. So then we just highlight some of those benefits, right? Customizations included. So, you know, if it's an event, we can match the decor, things like that. Uh, props, you know, included. That's some things that people need, you know, um, with when they're dealing with the photo booth, instant sharing. Right, that's super important these days with digital devices and how fast you can send, share things and repost to social media. Right, that's super important. That's a good benefit. Right, backgrounds and back uh, red carpet. That's an aesthetic. Right, so that adds a benefit to some events that are trying to you know stay elegant and want their images and things to look like high quality and their photo booth experience to you know really be enjoyable and a pleasant experience and it's not just boring over there in the corner of the event venue. So the backdrop in the red carpet is a good benefit. And then a lifetime gallery access, uh, that's super important because 
you know, sometimes we, you know, people just forget the tabs or the link that we sent to them right after the event or anything like that. So, you know, they just, what they'll do is they'll co contact us later on and then want access to their gallery. And we're like, yeah, of course, for sure. We do still have it on our server that we manage and host for you all on a monthly basis. Um, but yeah, for sure, we can pass it along to you. And then sometimes there's some more uh, benefits available, but we don't want, maybe I should put an Eclipse, um, but we don't want to list all of them. We want them to, you know, progress through this journey. And as you can see, they're pretty excited for what's next to come. They're like, okay, I'm digging it. I think it's pretty cool. See what they're offering. And then we'll hit them with a headline, right? Something short and sweet. They can know, you know what we're expecting of them, what call to action, um, you know, what, what's, what's possibly next. And then in some placements, you know, you may see the description or the description may could act as like a meta tag, right? So it allows the, I don't know, plaque, the algorithm to, you know, see some of the semantics that we're using, some of the keywords that we're using and allow us to show up in front of the right audiences. So that don't quote me on that, but I think, you know, that's what the description could do um, for you know, for the ad. So next, I would just keep this at learn more by default, but going through them again, none of these really apply. Some of them, it will make you think that there's like a, like you just do it quickly, instantly for the next step, but we're actually going to a landing page. So we want to say learn more. So, you know, they can know that they're not instantly going to book. Um, and then we want to put that website in there their link that we're driving them to so that, you know, we make sure we get them to the right place. Here you have your website, uh, events, Facebook tracking pixel set. So you're good to go. It means you'll be able to track. Looks pretty good. So next thing is to just publish it and send it on and wait for some results.